So thank you all for joining in today for the Tuesday Magical Calls. I'm Deepa Ramaraj. I'm a certified facilitator from Access Consciousness. And today's topic is being you. <clears throat> and I'm going to do a short book reading from this book, as well as discuss some aspects of this topic. So the topic is actually from chapter six of this book. Are you willing to be different enough to have a great relationship? On this planet, we spend a lot, a lot of time and energy on love and relationships. We are so cute. We beautiful beings on the planet, we do spend a lot of time thinking about relationships and love. We have so many judgments, conclusions, and points of view about what true love is and what it isn't. Almost all of us are searching for the perfect relationship, even if we pretend we are not. Yet, the way I see it, there are so many other possibilities of being with each other. So many. Now, this book is written by Dr. Dane here who is a co-creator of uh, Access Consciousness. Yet the way I see it, says Dane, there are so many other possibilities of being with each other. So many. We are just not taught to embrace all of that here. Those possibilities are not part of this reality. What if we could change the whole paradigm of relationships? What if we could change it to something that really works for all of us? What if it no longer has to be about control and jealousy and envy and right and wrong? What if it could be about the gift we can be to and for each other? Please know I'm not trying to make you wrong ever. My only intention is to invite you to a completely different way of being. Only you know if it is light for you. Only you know if it is true for you. A totally different perspective on relationship. I personally know how to do relationship really badly. Because of that, I've had to look at this area really dynamically to see what else might be possible. <clears throat> you know, there are some things in life that... Uh, we think, hey, I don't know enough about this topic. And that topic is where we are willing to be in question. And that's very relevant to all of us. Whenever we think, I know everything about this. I know how to conduct classes. I know how to go on a vacation. I know how to be in a family. I know this, I know that. The minute we actually say that, the information from the universe stops coming to us. And we stop being in the question. We get into a presumptive reality. I know everything. I This is the way it has to be done. This is the way the meal has to be cooked. There is no other way to do it. So even though there might be a zillion ways to cook certain meals, we might have a fixed point of view of exactly how it has to be cooked. Same way. Even though there are a zillion ways to create a relationship, we tend to look for a fixed way of creating a relationship. We look for a fixed way of a relationship showing up in our lives. Oh, children, parent-child relationship, I'm sorry, parent-child -ch relationship has to be this way. If I have children, then this is the way they have to be with me. If I have parents, this is the way they have to be with me. If I have a spouse, a lover, this is the way they have to be with me. So we have definitions for everything in our life. And that is what challenges us. That is what limits us. And wherever we say, hey, I don't know how this can be done. What can I learn today? And one of the tools is to ask, what else is possible here? What else is possible I haven't imagined possible? What can I learn here today? What questions can I ask to create greater? So these are some very expansive questions, expansive tools that you can use on a daily basis. And you can ask this on any topic, not just relationship. 
Okay, going to the book again. Let's start with a different definition of relationship. I know it's different. I know you'll probably want to see me a little weird for this one. Join the club. I define relationship as the degree of distance or separation between two objects. Why? Because in order for two objects to relate to each other, they have to be separate. Otherwise, they are in oneness. And then they are not in a relationship anymore because they are not separate. Does that make sense? I have looked and looked and looked at what creates a great relationship. And I must tell you, it's not at all what I thought created a great relationship. So in looking at this area, I realized we do something different than the ideal we all seem to be striving to achieve. Hence my different definition of the word relationship. Let me try to explain it, says Dane. If we are in a relationship, we have to be separate and distinct. So if you have to create something where you are separate and distinct, don't you create separation based on that itself, just to maintain that separation? So, <clears throat> for example, if we are out near a lake, with nature, lots of trees, plants, whatever around you, and you're being one with it, you're not going to make a difference in the way you perceive that. And you might just begin to be peaceful and be in oneness with that. Same thing with the relationship. However, when we say I am in a relationship, Along with it comes a bunch of expectations, projections about what it should be, what it should not be, what the other person should be. And these expectations are sometimes based on our culture, our past, our past relationships, our expectations <clears throat> of what that should be or should not be. Here is another weird one by the very concept of relationship. In this reality, you try to have this with only one person, which is of necessity excluding you because there are always two people in the relationship. You won't exclude the other person until you're tired of trying to give and give and give and give and it doesn't work. So what do you do? You tend to reject you. So you, when you say you're in a relationship with another person, you actually tend to reject you, separate you and include them. Do you know what I mean? You would exclude you more often than you would exclude them. Here's how it usually works. First, you see the person that you think can become, you can become one with. For 10 seconds, you see the greatness of each other that is possible. Yay! And then, 10 seconds later, you're judging and trying to cut off and divorce every part of you that doesn't match their judgments or at least what you think their judgments are. So divorce doesn't mean you're divorcing them. Here it means you're actually looking to divorce you from that relationship. Crazy? Sounds crazy. Third, you separate further and further and further and further, cutting off more and more and more of you, trying to match their judgments, their expectations, while they cut off more and more and more of them to try to match your expectations and your judgments. And you, wind, and you wonder why things fall apart eventually. They fall apart because neither of you is, because neither of you is there as the person you were when you started the relationship. So when you started the relationship, there is a sense of oneness, you're feeling excited, you're looking forward to this, and then all of these expectations and separations and the judgments kick in. That is what most relationships are about. I would like to see it be different too. That's why I'm presenting you with this different way of looking at this particular area. I know we can choose to create something different, but in order for that to occur, we have to acknowledge what is present now and what we are creating now. We have to acknowledge where we are, even if it seems difficult, painful, or impossible to change if we are ever able to get someplace different. 
Do you know anyone that has a true caring and great relationship? Think of it for a second. Do you? If so, you are lucky. Do you know that 90% of people would rather have a bad relationship than have no relationship? If you're a part of that very small percentage of the population that has a great relationship, that doesn't apply to you. This doesn't apply to you. This is because they fit where they have a relationship. In this reality, almost everyone is looking to fit in, trying to benefit, trying to win, and looking not to lose. In this wonderful reality, you fit when you have a relationship. You benefit by people not thinking you're a loser. When you have someone to have sex with, you win. You're a winner. Now, funny enough, it's irrelevant whether you're actually having sex or not. When you have someone to have sex with, when you have someone to copulate with, you are by definition a winner in this reality. Everybody wants to be a winner, right? Is that one of the reasons why you're striving to be with someone even when you really didn't necessarily want to be with anyone? So a lot of people judge themselves if they've been through a divorce. They judge other people who have been in a divorce. This reality judges people who've been through a divorce. Oh, they didn't, it didn't work out for them. And the person who's been through a divorce is also carrying some baggage. Is it true? that they are losers or is it just that it didn't work out between those two and what if that's all there is to it what if we didn't have to label it anything it didn't work out they chose not to live under the same roof they chose to lead their own different lives and what if that could actually be a sense of freedom what if divorce is not right or wrong, good or bad? It just is a choice. Just like marriage is a choice. And in this reality, when people are not married, everybody's asking, are you married? Are you married? As if that is the target that everybody has to achieve. Oh, finally, you've got married. Now you don't have to worry. This is what people are often told in certain cultural you know, backgrounds, which is kind of interesting. Is that the target for everybody? In this reality, it is a target. Very often, it's a cultural target for everybody. Oh, you're not married, I see. Oh, you're getting married. How wonderful. Now you're settling in. Otherwise, they're not settled in. What is the meaning of all these things in our society? What if you didn't have to buy it any more that you have to lie to yourself with each other, what's really going on for you? What other possibilities might open up for you and for all of us? How many relationships have you chosen that were not a contribution to your life, but allowed you to end the stigma of being alone? No longer being alone, by the way, is another reason why 90% of the people would rather have a bad relationship than no relationship. How insane is that? Whose reality are we validating? Whose reality are we living in any way? Who will be the first one who dares to say, hey, I chose differently. I chose me. Here in this reality is the weird part. The people who have chosen that have oftentimes been able to finally create the relationship that worked for them, even though it was different than what they were told, that they were supposed to choose by everybody else's point of view. Everybody has their fixed definition. And if you choose according to their point of view, then they'll say this marriage is doing well. Based on what? Is that of any interest to you? If it is, Everything that doesn't allow that to show up for you, will you now destroy and uncreate it all, please? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pop, all nine shots, boys, powads, and peons. And that is a clearing statement from Access Consciousness. So right and wrong, good and bad is where we have made something 
right, wrong. We're always trying to classify things in our life. This is the right thing. That is the wrong thing. This is the good thing. This is the bad thing. Marriage by a particular age, this is the right thing. Oh, you've been married throughout, not divorced. That is the right thing. Oh, you have been divorced. That is this. That is wrong. This is right. So we're perpetually trying to judge and classify things. Everything you bought about needing to have a relationship and sex so that you can fit in, benefit, win, and finally not feel like a loser will you now destroy and uncreate it all. Yes. I'm waiting to hear a yes from somebody. Yes. 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 Strong, good, bad, good, 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 all nine shots, boys, proverbs, and beyonds. Thank you for that. Do any of you feel like that? Where you have been bound by other people's requirements of what your relationships should be? Yeah. Do you then give that up? Or are you still waiting for people to validate you? Everywhere you're waiting for people to validate you, everywhere you're waiting for people to acknowledge you, everywhere you're waiting for people to acknowledge and validate your choice about relationships, are you all willing yes. to destroy and uncreate it all? Yes. Yes. Right, Tom, good, bad, what, talk, all nine shots, boys, powers, and beyonds. Could there be something even greater than love? What if instead of striving for love, you were willing to have gratitude, caring, and no judgment? If you were willing to choose that instead, it would take you out of all the judgments that are attached to the program of love. What did I say just now? Program of love. I know that for many of you, this goes against your basic faith. Love is beauty. Love is God. Love is what you what will save us. Love is the very core of our being, right? But how many definitions of love are there? Do you realize that the word love has more definitions than almost any other word? So when I say I love you, what does that mean to you? Is it kind of something like this? I love you and only you and I don't want to be with anybody else and I don't want to think of anybody else nor do I ever want to receive anything from anybody else nor do I want to give anything to anybody else. You're my only and only. I love you. Oh, by the way, I expect the same from you. Now, is that the same as it means to me? No. Different people have different definitions of what love is. It means something different to every one of us. Yet we expect that when we tell somebody we love them, it means the same thing to them or her as it does to you, us. It can't. They have a totally different life, a totally different upbringing, a totally different experience from what we've had. See, have you noticed even when you're with your siblings, brother or sister, you may have been born to the same parents, living in the same house during your childhood. And yet, even though you went maybe to the same schools, had similar friends, yet what takes place is that you don't always gel together. You're not always laughing, enjoying yourselves together. And now, totally out of context, you get married or get into a relationship to somebody from a totally different environment. And how do you now expect that to be a miraculous success with no friction? And that's where our expectation of perfectionism steps in. I'm seeing this light in the back is giving me a halo. It's like one nice bright star on over my head. Anyways, so <clears throat> that's where our expectation of perfectionism steps in. We expect that other person to be perfect, perfectly the expectation of what we expect them to be, 
and they expect us to be something else. And then now we are not that, and they are not that. And so comes in disappointment, frustration, irritation, upset. Or are you willing to just create beyond that situation? Do you get locked in with all those upsets and angles and frustrations? Or are you willing to discuss some things without rejecting you, without rejecting them, and say, you know what, this works for me, this is not working for me. What else is possible here? What if neither was right or wrong, good or bad? <clears throat> so coming from different, excuse me, different lives, a totally different upbringing, totally different experiences, we have had then we expect this relationship to be something it's a huge source of confusion because we're all so busy for that state of ideal unconditional love we don't realize it what if love is a societal programming designed to make sure that what you know should be possible as unconditional love love with no judgment of right or wrong good or bad or anything else what if that never shows up where do you see unconditional love in the world? Where do you see someone in the world choosing it? Except you. You are trying to do it all the time and never succeeding, never judging, constantly judging you. Why can't I be this? Why can't I affect this change in the world? Why can't I make this occur? Why am I the only one who seems to know this is possible? How do I know? Because I was one of those people. I knew it should be possible. I always judge myself for all the places in which I couldn't create it, says Dane. I'm sure you've never done that though. You keep trying to uphold the ideal of what love is supposed to be while seeing that no one else around you chose it. At which point you wanted to come out of love and just kill them for not seeing what's possible. Cute and not necessarily your brightest choice, my friend. Have you been programmed to view love as the ultimate possibility? Is it or are you? Love is designed to get you to reach for something outside of you and it's not actually possible to create what love is supposed to create through that venue. But, but it is possible through being you. What if instead of just love, you were willing to have gratitude, caring, and judgment for you? If you were willing to choose that instead, it would take you out of all the judgments that are attached to that program of love. And each of those of gratitude, caring, and no judgment, they are actually possible to have, they're actually possible to be. And they don't require you to look outside of you for something that is impossible to find. If you were willing to have them for you, they would almost magically be available for everyone else too. I think all of you are totally fried. I don't even know whether any of you is hearing the words anymore. And is it possible that the combination of gratitude, caring, and no judgment more closely matches the energy of what you thought you were going to get from love? Yes. Thank you for that. I'm going to skip a few minutes here. Just mute yourselves meanwhile. From the moment you were conceived, you've been picking up the thoughts, feelings, and emotions and the sexual points of view of all the people around you. Initially, you were trying to figure out how to do this reality. How does mom do this reality? How does dad do this reality? How do my siblings do this reality? How do my relatives do this reality? How do my friends do this reality? You suck all of that in and you become a propagation of all these people's points of view about what this reality is. Hardly any of which includes you because you were not asking, what would I like to 
be? What would I like in this reality? You were asking, how do they do it here on this weird planet? How do I fit in here? How do I do it right? How do I do it like everyone else here? How do I win and how do I not lose here? We're not asking what would I like as a reality? What would my life, what would I like my life to look like? So what else is possible? So we were talking about how we try to fit into this reality. We keep looking at how's this person dealing with this reality? How's that person dealing with this reality? And we try to mimic that and it doesn't work for it. Then we get frustrated because we don't know how to create our own different way of our life, a life that works for us. So one of the tools is to ask expansive questions that include us. Instead of asking, how do they do it here? How do that person, how does that person do it? Ask, what would I like my life to look like? What would I like as this reality, as my reality? Because if you don't ask those questions, you're always picking up other people's choices, other people's hopes, their dreams, their insanities, their choices, which may not even be working for them. And you're looking to see how you can make something work for you. And even if that works for them, it may or may not work for you. So you've got to be willing to experiment, to just move forward with no points of view to see what else is possible for you. But if your current relationship goes down the same old path as every other relationship has, are you aware that you must be one that chose this path? Isn't that kind of cool? Because if every other relationship that you've been in goes down the same path, what is the common denominator in those relationships? You. Who is the only one who can choose something different? You. I know, like me, you've probably been hoping to find someone or something that's different. Someone that gets you. Someone that will make all of what you've decided must be true work. But guess what? That will only occur when you demand it. When you're going to choose that for you, regardless of anybody else's points of view and regardless of whether anybody else gets you or not. Choosing this reality as the basis for your reality will never work because it doesn't include you. It, it is always about the limitation, the wrongness, and the judgment. It's not about the possibilities. So everything you've done to choose this reality, oh, your awareness of what you would truly like to choose, would you now destroy and uncreate it all? Yes. Right? Yes. yes. Spot talk, all mm -hmm. nine shots, boys, powads, and beyonds. Okay, so let's take a break from this book. What is it you'd like to create in your relationships? What questions could we ask you? <clears throat> Anyone? How many of you would like to have ease and joy in your relationships? Okay, so one of you does. Another one. Yes, okay, Shrey is asking. Okay, you can ask, what is my reality with relationships? Yes, definitely. So that gives you an idea. It's like taking a status check. You get a status check on what your relationships are, where they are today. If we were to expand that to greater possibilities, one of the questions you can ask is, okay, what would I like to see this relationship as? What would I like this relationship to be? 
and you don't have to visualize this just get the energy of a fun happy relationship if you project an expectation towards it it may not get met How much fun can I have with this person? Are you willing to have fun with no points of view about it? Then it doesn't matter whatever is coming up that day between the two of you, you may still have fun because you asked for it. So the way you word it actually creates that expansiveness that is possible. Why? Because words carry energy. And energy was the first language, actually, even before words. The words you use carry energy. How to make it stronger? So what if we didn't have to make it stronger? Because if you have to make something stronger, you have to judge what is there now. <laughs> One of the greatest tools in a relationship is allowance. Allowance for the other person's choice. So often we have a controlling expectation. I wish they do this this way. I wish they pay attention to me in this way. I wish they save this to me, get me flowers, do that for me, or they don't bother me about some things or whatever that is. So those are all the expectations, projections and rejections and separations that we put into that relationship. And then we have the disappointments because that person did not match those expectations. When you give up expectations and you're willing to be in allowance, allowance is where we are not making the other person right or wrong, good or bad. You're also not making you right or wrong, good or bad. And you're also not making the situation right or wrong, good or bad. That is allowance. Where nothing is right or wrong or good or bad. That is the space you could create greater. Does it mean you buy your own flowers? Yes, why not? You know? You like flowers, go and buy it. Absolutely. You don't put it on the, on the other purpose. Exactly, you know, okay. you're right. Absolutely right. What is the point in expecting, okay, he didn't buy me flowers, so I think maybe he doesn't love me or whatever other stories we may have. You like flowers, go buy flowers. That's the mills and boons we need. That's, that's what we look for that romanticism, that perfectionism in all our relationships. Yeah. Those all preconceived. Somebody else's realities we made it ours. Correct. And we are busy judging our relationship. See, that person gets his spouse, uh, I mean, uh, flowers. Yeah. But, you know, so they must be very happy. It's just a definition. She what got the diamond it? ring. I didn't get mine. Correct. And my my spouse becomes the bad person in the process. They went on holidays. We didn't go. Exactly. This is the way we compare ourselves to make yeah. ourselves look bad. And then we judge ourselves and we say, or we get bugged with the spouse and say, you should have done this for me or that for me. You didn't even do this. And they're like, what the hell? You can also plan these things. <laughs> yeah. So what? Ma'am, uh, relationship goes with a hand in our hand in our hand in hand of expectation. That's the root of starting a relationship. So how do we get rid of that? I think by basically we are. If you go back to the root, every relationship starts with an expectation. Otherwise, we don't go there, right? So how do we get baseline corrected? I mean, I, I know I'm, 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 I'm just coming, stepping back um, from the point where we are now. So, Absolutely great question. Okay. What if we didn't have an expectation? So right now, all of you look at your current relationship, which may not be going well for you, whichever relationship that may be. All the projections, rejections, judgments you have of that relationship, of what it should be, should not be, what it is, what it isn't, and all the definitions you have of what a right relationship should be, should not be, and of what you are and what you're not. Are you willing to destroy and uncreate it all? Yes. Right, wrong, good, yes. bad, hot, pop, online, shots, boys, pavads, and beyonds. Yeah. 
do this clearing multiple times. Multiple times daily. Why? Because every day we are so awesome at building new expectations, new disappointments, new upsets. With everything, even with, in our workplace. Absolutely. With our workplace, with our friends. The traffic on the road. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so technically, business, yeah. technically, expectations boils down to everything. Our whole lives are in that same realm. Correct. We're going round and round and all the time expecting something. And when it doesn't happen, the disappointment happens. So you, can you repeat the clearing again? Let me try because I may not remember it. It goes with yeah, the energy okay, and if some of the energy has cleared, then that same clearing won't come again in my case. Okay. So because I'm not reading from a fixed list, list of clearings, all the projections, rejections, separations, judgments you have about this person about you and all the definitions you have about what the relationship should be should not be what you should be what should not be and everything else times a godzillion are you all willing to destroy and uncreate it all yeah. right wrong good bad pot pock all nine shots boys pobads and beyonds so what are your expectations of yourself, of the others? And what are your disappointments about you, about the other person, about the situation? Everything that is times a godzillion, are you willing to destroy and uncreate it all? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shots, boys, pavads and beyonds. And people say, okay, but if there are no expectations, then what is possible? How can we enjoy? How do we do things together? When we give up expectations and start asking, okay, am I willing to have fun any which way? What is the point of having a life together with somebody? Or even if it is your sibling, your parent, your children, what is the point if you're continuously upset angry or disappointed with the situation or with your life what is the point of that what if the purpose of life was to just be happy no matter what takes place what if that was a possibility then would you choose it So all that keeps you, this is my one of my favorite clearings, all that keeps you from having more fun today than any other day so far. Are you willing to destroy and uncreate it all? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shots, boys, poets, and beyonds. Because when you're feeling crappy sometimes and you do this clearing repeatedly, you're actually clearing up some of the crap that is going to create more crap in your lives. And when you start clearing the crap, less crap can get created. But sometimes we're really good at creating crap in our lives. So you will create it any which way. So the next step is the willingness to laugh it out. Even if you don't tell anybody else, just if you're willing to laugh it off and say, hey, I choose this, I don't know, whatever reason. Okay, how does it get better than this? And move on from there. It actually creates greater ease in your life. So make sure you're willing to laugh off something. Doesn't matter if it's about you, the other person. What if the purpose of life was to have fun? What if the purpose of life was not to be serious, fixed, fixated in something? What if you could just play with these different tools to enjoy life? And create greater too, and have money and enjoy. Where did we decide this is the substance to have a success. Have you studied? Have you studied properly? You, tomorrow is your exam. This is how, we, you know, our parents probably adjust, you know, address things with us, at least some of us. And then we think if they did it or they didn't do it, doesn't matter. But this is the way I have to be with my children now. So we have our definitions of what that role has to be. 
now the child is already fed up, doesn't want to hear the word of studies and books and have you studied this exam for this thing? And then exactly that is what we are doing with them. Just like you probably may or may not have enjoyed hearing it so much, what if you could be willing to get the message to, to look at what else is possible? On another note, can you have too much fun? Yes. And what if it's allowed? What if you can give yourself permission for that? <laughs> I'm allowing it. No, and no one likes it when you're having too much fun. Yes, no one likes it. You're absolutely right. No one likes it. It's not allowed. In yeah. this reality, you're not allowed to have too much fun. You know, they even have something. If you're laughing too much, you will cry. They will say that. Also. Uh -huh. yes, and people are all now scared to laugh too much because then they might get to cry. And this I've seen not just in the Indian uh, culture. They have this even in, among Filipinos. Okay. Oh. So it's there in multiple cultures around the world. They just say it differently. That's all. Okay. So everywhere you bought into it, that you can't laugh too much or have too much fun, you must just have limited, yeah. fun, but not too much. Yeah. Are you willing to destroy and uncreate it all? Yes. yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shots, boys, powads, and beyonds. What if there was no such thing as a limit to the amount of fun you could have? Then what else is possible? So every Tuesday, we're just going to pick up different books or different topics and just explore different aspects of that life, talk about it and see what else is possible. Uh, Ma'am, are, are we saying uh, we are going with the repeated uh, belief system or what we hear uh, from the childhood and that's something that repeated thoughts and beliefs is getting influenced in our every relationship. Is that true? Is that correct, right? Hmm. This what is how we were. We've been brought up, so I, I want my kids. Correct? That's we have that programming. Correct, no? We have that programming, isn't it? And then hmm. we also have the programming that, you know, now I have to be a good parent. So even though I was playing the fool and enjoying myself in school, I will lecture my children and make them study hmm. so that at least then they will get the message and start studying. Or other way, like you, if you study, you, you go abroad, you get job. I mean, they, they keep narrating the same learn every day. day Absolutely. Day Absolutely. As if that is the target for happiness. Hmm. And nobody asks the kid, hey, what do you want to be? What do you want to create? What is fun for you now? No, no. Okay. If you do engineering, then that is the happy recipe. And if you do this so-and-so thing, that will be the right thing for you. Because I know a zillion others who have done that, or I know somebody who has done that, and that's been the magic formula for that person. And therefore, it has to be for you. Interesting, right? How we create our lives. We we, we get influenced externally a lot. Yes, we get influenced a lot. And then we say, I remember when I was in my 12th, as they call it, A levels. And uh, if I went for a walk, it was a gated community. If I went for a walk, all my classmates parents were also going for a walk around that same time and if they watched me going for a walk they'll say hey Deepa have you studied what's going on how is your you know preparation going and I would truthfully answer no I haven't yet started oh my god it's the exam is in two months you better start now you must study all of them I used to get this lecture I used to think like gosh I don't even have these few minutes free when I'm going for a walk everybody's asking me What's my deliverable? Where am I, you know, have I studied enough, prepared enough? As if, you know, these questions at home were not enough. Okay. So it was like literally my parents duplicated everywhere. hundred parents asking me, not just my parents. Now, what do we do? Children hardly go for a walk. They're always sitting in the house. And the same parents will say the same things hundred times. And we think we've been the best of parents. And why is my kid not happy?
So why do we do that? You tell me, why do we do that? What do we love about making our lives difficult? <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a husband or children as yet. So... <laughs> Lucky you, don't tell anybody. I get a lot of that. Lucky you, don't get married. <laughs> that again is their transference onto me. And I, I say like, why? Why do you think that just because you are having a lousy marriage, mine is going to be, I'm going to make different choices, right? But it's, then I learn, okay, Priya, keep quiet. Don't right. say more than you have to. <laughs> more than Nobody they can wants hear. You happy. Don't say more than they can hear. Yeah. I've learned, fortunately, I've learned thanks to you, Deepa, <laughs> from a very long ago access class. Really, as much, you know, I try to catch all your little access, even listening to Dane and his whole approach, even if those small snippets, watching that makes such a difference to our realities to understand that you have to keep on practicing it. You can't sure. expect it all to go away one day with one wand. To know that we keep revisiting all these thought processes. And it's the judgments, the expectations are there at every step you take. So true, so true. So thank you all for playing with the tools. I call it playing with the tools because, yes, remind yourself. Remind yourself of the tools in your own different ways. Come for these Tuesday calls. Choose whatever works for you. Play with these tools because as you play with them, you will see what works for you. And don't make any tool right or wrong, good or bad. Be saying, okay, what else is possible? Right now, I may not choose this tool. Universe, teach me more about this other tool. There might be some tools which are so confusing. They're like, what the hell is that tool about? Okay, maybe I'll see it in the future. You may not choose some tools today and what if that's all right too. So as you play with the different tools, you will get a sense of what works for you today and tomorrow it may be a different tool again. So be willing to play with it. Thank you all for joining in. Sure, see you then. Thank see you. See you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. Ma Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all.